Hello and welcome! My name is Lynn and today I am going to make a magic wallet card and it's so easy this project that I'm actually going to film this in real time so that you can actually see how simple and easy it is to put together especially once you've cut everything. I do have everything prepared in advance but let me first show you, I've made a lot of these because I want to have them on hand. They're great for giving out gift cards. So I thought it would be nice to just have a bunch on hand ready to go. And that way, whenever I need to give somebody a little bit of a thank you by way of gift carding them, I have one of these magic wallets. And if you don't already, um, haven't already seen these and you're not familiar with them, they are actual wallets that you can buy. You can get leather wallets that are designed this way. And the idea is that you can put cash, credit cards, whatever you'd like behind. What I've used here is ribbon, but a lot of times with actual wallets, they'll be elastic. That way you could... Um, put several uh, bills, folded cash or credit cards, and that elastic will expand and as well just hold it very, very tightly. So what's cool about this is that you can fold this over, open it the other way, and you can see that card now magically appears over here. So we'll do that again. It's here behind the crisscross. We flip it over and now it's over here behind the two parallel lines. I've made this in uh, using several just scraps. You don't even have to need or use a lot of pattern papers for this. If you're down to maybe just one sheet of eight by eight, maybe a bit of ephemera or maybe some leftovers from a cut apart, that's enough for one of these because I've designed this so that it only uses one sheet of eight by eight plus a bit of something as your focal image and I've put something on the front and the back. So this one is from the Love Notes collection. Um, that's from the Deluxe uh, Collector's Edition and this one is from the Deluxe Collector's Edition for Imagine is the name of this one and it works the same. You can open it both ways and you have your uh, magic wallet uh, in the center. This is Let's Get Artsy and same thing. You can just continue to open this every which way and you can um, you can see how fun these are just beyond the gifts uh, gift cards that you can put in them you could you could scale this up you could think this a different size if you'd like to maybe put a photo it is great for um, it could fit what maybe the um, Instax photos if you want to put those in here too. Those three that I showed are portrait um, but I just want to show this one. I made this one from PS I Love You and it's landscape and it works just the same. So there's my gift card which I like especially for the presentation of a gift card because usually your gift cards are oriented in that landscape um, formation and so there you can see it magically moves. <laughs> it's just, it's so fun to play with. And so this will work landscape or um, portrait, whichever orientation you prefer, you could definitely um, make it to fit that. So how do we make one of these? It's really pretty simple. I've got all the pieces here. And what I'm going to do is I'll just read off of these dimensions for you. I've got two solid color cardstock pieces that have been cut to three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So three, well, these ones are gonna be landscape. So I'll show you the landscape orientation. And so that's four and a quarter wide by three and a quarter tall. You can get, this is the other reason why I chose this um, particular size, is because if you are working with USA 2, um, or sorry, US um, 
letter size card stock, which is eight and a half by 11, you can actually get six of these from one sheet of eight and a half by 11. So along that eight and a half inch edge, you just need to cut in half at four and a quarter, and then just cut three and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter, and you'll be able to get six of these total. So there's that. My pattern papers have all been cut to three by four. So in this case, since it's landscape, this will be four wide by three tall. So on one sheet of eight by eight, you can actually get um, four, all four. But I'm actually going, I've got this cut apart left over, which is also three by four. This is from the 12 by 12. So the 12 by 12 pattern papers do have a sheet. One of the patterns will be a sheet of cut aparts. And you can get, I think, uh, some three by four cut aparts, some four by six cut aparts. So this is one of the three by fours. And I'm going to use this one as the front. This is going to be the back. So set those aside for now, and then these two will be the inside. And so they'll be kind of stacked a little bit, something. These were scraps left over, so they don't really connect with each other in terms of ha uh, having that seamless pattern. So I think I might do something like that. So we'll go a little something like that. Okay, so whatever you want to be the inside, we're going to start there first. And we need some ribbon. So I'm using ribbon instead of elastic, which is what you would normally find in an actual wallet. Because I think the ribbon's just fine. It's uh, secure enough. These are from Graphic 45. I like the satin ribbons because they're about a quarter of an inch or so wide. And I think for this scale of project, the thinner ribbon, I think, works really nicely. I've actually cut four pieces and they've been cut to two different lengths. So two of them are five inches and then two of them are five and a half. So let's start by going um, adhering down our inside um, pattern papers. And again, my pattern papers have been cut to three by four. And all four panels you can get from one sheet of eight by eight. And you can vary them because they are double sided. So you can use, you know, one side on the outside of your magic wallet card and then you can use just flip it over to the B side to use for the inside of your magic wallet so you could definitely do that if you're down to maybe your last sheet of pattern paper oh this is pretty um, but you can also do what I'm doing today, which is to just use up some scraps left over from another project. So this is a great scrap buster as well because these, are, these aren't super big pieces of pattern paper. So likely um, I was able to find everything I needed from the scraps. And so I'm sure you'll be able to as well. So then with our ribbon now it might help to look at one so here's here's the one that i made earlier so this is also the landscape oriented one so we'll keep that there just so that you can see doesn't really matter you know top or bottom which which side you put the crisscross and which side you put the two parallel strips so just to show you that i'm gonna just reverse it i'm gonna do my crisscross up here the thing you want to um, maybe be a little bit mindful of is if you are using whatever you plan to hold down, right? You want to make sure that whatever you do, you have these lined up so that they'll s they're positioned so that they will still hold down whatever object you want to put in this and that was definitely a consideration when I came up with these dimensions so that I could really make sure that a gift card would be held in place on these so I'm going to take my two longer ribbons these are five and a half 
long. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the help of my grid mat to center it this way so I can kind of see this is my center line right here. And I want to crisscross these ribbons. Remember, I'm just going to do the reverse just so that you can see that it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to crisscross these, but then I'm looking at the top here at the end. I want these, I don't want these so uh, crisscross that they're wide like that because I don't think they're going to secure this down quite as well and they're not going to leave enough room for me to um, attach these two strips later. So I'm going to bring these in close and looking at the ends, I am going to aim for about, oh, you know, I'm going to aim for these to be about two inches apart from one another. And this is really forgiving. You don't have to be precise about any of this. When it's about where I want, what I'm going to do is just put some low tack tape. So this is going to be uh, removable later. It's actually scotch removable tape, which I've really been enjoy enjoying. And then, um, and then we have this piece. Now this piece is going to have the strips that go parallel to one another like this. But, but I'm going to wait until um, I get this attached down first, and then I'm going to attach these. And you'll see why in a moment, but for now, I'm going to actually flip these over together just because I am working with a uh, pattern paper that does have an orientation to it. So I just want to make sure that I keep that orientation. Now I've flipped this over. And what I want to do is start to secure down these ribbons. Really, really easy. Again, I'm just going to use some scotch tape. This is just regular plain old scotch tape. And on the outer edge, this is the outer edge, I want to, and you know, if it's easier, you can do these one at a time. I want to fold this over and tack it down. This is the outside edge. Fold it over, tack it down. I don't want to get the tape too close to um, the edge here because I know I'm going to put some pattern paper here, but I know that there's going to be a little bit of a border of my card base showing. So I just want to make sure that I don't have tape showing. So that's why I've taped it more towards the inside. Then on the, on the inside edge, the edge that is um, adjoining the other half of our card, what I'm going to do is with the help of my grid mat, I am going to line up these two cards so that they're nice and flush with each other. They're flush this way as well. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to attach these ends here to the adjoining panel. So let's Maybe use one of the thinner lines on my grid mat. There we go. So I'm looking at this line here, getting all of that nice and lined up. I want it nice and lined up against this edge too. And then I can tape those down. And remember, on this inside edge, these ribbons are getting tacked down to the joining panel, not to the panel that the crisscross is here. It's actually getting attached to the other panel opposite it. And again, just going to tack this down with some scotch tape. And I'm going to burnish these, but there's going to be a layer of pattern paper going on top of them. So you don't really have to worry too, too much about um, about that because it's going to be well secured. So this panel, remember, uh, let me flip this back over. This is the one with the crisscross. So now this panel is the one that's going to have the parallel lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of ribbon, slide it behind, and I'm just going to bring this ribbon on the inside so that it's over top. It's on top of the panel that's next to it here. 
and I'm gonna scooch it. I'm gonna scooch it pretty close to that crisscross. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet. I'm gonna slip it under and I'm gonna scooch it kind of close to our crisscross. And when we when we adhere these down, we'll make sure that it's um, straight. But to be honest, this is really forgiving. It doesn't really have to be perfect. But again, you just wanna make sure that where you have these ribbons, you wanna make sure that it's still gonna hold down whatever you wanna put. See how the ribbons are still going to overlap? over the gift card so you just want to make sure that it fits there and I'm going to do the same thing that I did on this side but kind of um, mirrored so the outside edge that would be the top edge the outside edge I am going to nudge this so that it's about at the right spot and fold this in and glue it on top of the panel itself gonna do the same with this one and fold that over and tape that down then the opposite side on the inside edge these ribbon tails will get attached to the joining panel so that it connects the two pieces and again I'm just gonna Pull this so that if it helps you can um, do them one at a time but if it's easier you can do them together just pull it so that it's taut it doesn't have to be tight you don't want to pull it so tightly that these two panels start to kind of overlap at all you don't need them to overlap you just want it to be nice and tight so that it does hold down whatever you want it to hold down and I'll give that a good burnish now um, that is our mechanism complete. So this is our uh, inside that we've been working on and this is our outside. So I'm gonna, I can take this off now because that was just there to hold down that crisscross. And so now we can decorate the outside. If you are using directional papers, you do wanna just make sure that these are the right direction and then you can open it up like I've done here just to make sure which way it's going to open. And then that way you can um, complete your, your decorating. I did not round the corners on these and I think I will. I'm gonna round the corners on this cut apart here. So that we have something like that and I'm going to actually I'm going to use some liquid adhesive because I really want to make sure with that ribbon sandwiched in there that we get a really nice secure hold. So just a thin line of liquid adhesive throughout and this is great because it's a cut apart that doesn't even have a sentiment it's just pretty so that's why I, I like having making a bunch of these and having them on hand because for whatever occasion I need to give a little bit of a thank you or maybe I uh, forgot somebody's present and you know I have some gift cards on hand I can just give them one of these and so that's the outside front and then this is the back and this is easy it's just a bit of plaid pattern paper so it's nice that it's not really that directional so I don't have to be too too careful about this one but uh, you should be mindful if you are using a directional pattern on this one as well make sure that it's going in the direction that you would want to see and and then we're done so that is it complete I can get a gift card here. So you can see it's opposite of this, but it's it's gonna work just fine. So there's our gift card inside. Looks like this, you can open it like that. 
and you could just transform this so that it is moving back and forth between the top and the bottom and it's secured in both locations so whether you're looking at it from the top or you're looking at it from this way regardless of how they open it they're um they are going to really enjoy it and even even if they don't realize this is landscape and they open it this way it it's still going to work and it opens um uh, this way as well so just so so much fun so that is your magic wallet complete and so i've got hello pumpkin p.s i love you love notes let's get artsy and imagine I hope that you enjoyed this video today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.